Hey guys, this is Sai from Brevity and here we are today again with another lead code problem, minimum size subarrayza. When you look at this problem, it's quite simple, right? You ha you are given with an array, you are given with a target sum and basically you just have to give the minimum length of subarray which is uh, greater than or equal to the target right Th that's what is our uh, uh, main goal so there is one approach coming to my mind by using a dq a dq i guess if you didn't uh, see what a dq is i'll give a link here where Siddharth has beautifully explained about how DQ works and what is a DQ. So, basically a DQ, uh, using a DQ you probably can, uh, you know, as and when the, num uh, the numbers come from the array, you push to the DQ and you check the sum. Subsequently, you keep a track of it. If it is greater than or equal to S, you... Um, I guess keep it or else you just pop out pr from the right and uh, like that like uh, in that fashion you have to traverse through the whole list uh, which is given to us so that is one way of doing that where I guess the time complexity might be um, O of N I guess and t space complexity would be O of N because you, you will be needing a DQ. But since we are looking at sliding window this week, let's try to implement it using sliding window. Growing and shrinking face are the vital roles which we use in sliding window, which is of variable length. If you guys don't understand what I mean, check out here. There, uh, Vignesh has beautifully explained about growing and shrinking face and how do we implement it in sliding window. I'll wait until you watch it. You guys are back? Okay, let's get started with how we implement it with growing and shrinking face in that variable sliding window okay looking at the main crux of this algorithm it is the growing and shrinking face so for the given problem it would be whenever you have a condi this condition sum greater than or equal to s you have to uh, start the shrinking face if the sum is not met uh, with the given target where the sum is less than s you can go with the growing phase so keeping that in mind let's see how we can implement it here okay so we got two pointers i and j i will be used for growth phase and j will be used for shrinking phase so right now i is pointing to two right so we update our given subarray sum as two and uh, increment our i pointer because now we are in the growth phase we still haven't met the condition right that sum greater than or equal to s the target sum so we go with the growth phase where i is, is going on incrementing and now right now i is pointing to 3 so let's update it as 5 and keep incrementing our i uh, yes okay so i here and now i is pointing to 1 so right now sum will become 6 and we con still continue with the growth phase because 6 is less than 7 so let's do that now i is pointing to 2 and we up we hit the condition at this point 8 is greater than or equal to 7 so at this point we keep track of length which is now 4 we can calculate that with uh, I, I minus J plus 1 because it's like you uh, J is at the 0th index I is at the th third index for uh, I, I as for the list if you see in Python or in any language uh, as such there 
so the that four is the mini the length of that sub array right now and now it's time for growth i mean shrinking phase so we decrease increment a j and remove uh, this element i'm from the sum of this sub arrays so we update it as six so right now it is uh, less than seven so we go with the growth phase and update it as 10 and then we go with the shrinking phase now so now j is incremented here and uh still now at, at that point at that point it was still uh length as four length was four and minimum length uh minimum of four and four was only four so we, we don't have to update length right now but now at this point when we go with the shrinking phase it was updated at seven now seven is less greater than or equal to seven so now we have to update our length so now it would it will be uh three because now we have only three sub uh, three elements in the sub array so next we go with the shrinking phase again so now it will be decremented to six the sum and now we have to go with the growth phase where uh, i will be incremented as well as the sum will be subsequently incremented at this point it's three and three minimum which is three so go with the shrinking phase where j is incremented and the sum is reduced now still it is greater than or equal to so length now again will be updated here so this becomes two and as uh, now will uh, i is already in, uh, reached the end of the list j hasn't reached so we'll keep on incrementing j until it reaches the end of the list so that that's basically here it comes here now at this point both i and j are have reached the end of the list so it is safe to uh, come out of the loop so, okay so if i and j are are pointing to the end of the list and the length is infinity that would mean that the sub array sum is not met with the main condition where sum is greater than or equal to s so it is safe to return zero at that point so with this logic clear we'll try to implement it in code okay so let's get started coding we have to get two pointers right so that is i equal to zero j equal to zero and we have to get sub array sum and sub array length so sub sum is equal to zero and sub len is equal to float inf so this float inf is infinity in python but in probably in c plus plus and java it might be math dot max or max i'm not sure so th that should be the case it's just infinity here so while i is less than um len of nums uh we gotta loop through the array and check whether you want to start the growth phase or you want to start the shrink phase for the growth phase you have to check this condition if um sub sum is less than s if this is the condition you have to increment the sum so sub sum plus equal to nums of i and i i plus equal to one so if this is not the condition you come to while sub sum is greater than or equal to s now this is the shrink phase now if you have to check a condition if i minus j is uh, less than float oh sorry uh, sub len yeah so if this is the case you have to update sub length so sub len uh, is equal to i minus j and now you uh, have to even decrement right from the uh, decrement what that j was holding that value so uh, sub sum minus equal to nums of j what that j element j index was holding that value should be subtracted and j plus equal to one you increment the j pointer and now you can safely return the sub length but you have to check a condition right so if sub length is equal to float inf 
so whether uh, you didn't get any, you didn't achieve the target so if that's the case return zero else uh, return sublen so i think this should work let's try it out yeah so hypothetically if you had a sub array sum of 70 that's not possible in this case so let's see what happens as you see there is the edge case handling already going on so um, i think this should be working let's try submitting it okay it is submitted and i guess it's quite fast so let's see for the debug phase but the debug phase here i don't feel like there is any issues here right now so um if you guys had uh, encountered any issue you guys have to debug it don't forget so let's get to the next step where we optimize the code so in terms of optimization i can probably re reduce the lines of code maybe you know like these things like th these small small stuff you can do right so zero zero float inf and here comma j comma sub sum sub length so this these three are removed uh, yeah think uh, th this is one uh, optimization and yeah here so these four lines in python you can write literally in one line i'll show you how yeah that's it so let's try running this code again oh, okay this, this is fine let's su submit it yeah it's the same so as far as optimization goes i think you can't optimize it further than this because this is like quite fast and regarding time and space complexity of this algorithm uh it would be o of two times n like because you go with the growth phase and then go with the shrink phase so in worst worst time it would be like you are going through the whole array once and again in the shrink phase you go through the whole array again so it would be o of two times n so it would symbolically mean it is o of n and space complexity as far as i see is just o of one because you are having it's a constant time where i mean sorry constant space where you have only four variables used and with those four variables you are able to achieve your target so space complexity is o of one hope you guys understood the logic behind this problem how i coded it and solve it so if you guys liked it please comment like share and subscribe so for more queries like if you have any queries you can probably hop onto our discord server link will be given in the description below so this is sai signing up